with Jesus Joy. Make welcome Benson Ogbe. Thank you for your sweet presence. Lord, today I ask that you hide me behind the cross and let Jesus be revealed to everyone that is here. That at the end of this meeting, we will leave this place tremendously empowered to build better families in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh Lord, for the anointing that makes preaching easy. Let the teaching of God come with simplicity and accuracy. Let it come with precision. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. Can somebody around your space feel so welcome? Feel privileged to be around you. Let somebody feel privileged and honored to be around you. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Amen. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Family Summit has been running for a few years now. Uh, but there's something we have not really done. And I want to... I'm thinking of doing right now, if anybody can indulge me. I've had people share personal testimonies directly with me. Somebody even sent me a message to you or commented somewhere and said... He was thanking God that I picked the call of God, amen. And how his marriage was impacted just yesterday. And somebody who was, in, who was in last year's family summit said that um, before the summit, for over three years, no, two years, for three years, he and his wife, you know, had had very heated challenges. She had left her house for some time but then return, and when she returned two years, you know, into her return, they were not sleeping on the same bed, sleeping in separate rooms, and not on the same bed. I mean, in separate rooms, right? But after last, one of the sessions in Family Summit last year, that he was lying down on the floor in the living room, and he just had a hand touching him. Ah. <laughs> hand he thought it was a rat. Then he opened his eyes and saw it was a human rat. <laughs> and he recognized that woman to be his wife. And then, you know, together they talked on the floor there in the living room. And then went back to bed. I don't know what happened, amen. <laughs> but then something happened. This is a testimony. He said six months into that, they went back again. Crisis hit their home. And they reverted to the... Uh, situation of sleeping in separate rooms but then yesterday wow. so he told me he said can family summit be every day wow. <laughs> he said yesterday after the return this time around he was the big rat that went to touch his wife <laughs> somebody say amen. amen and that's wisdom because wisdom is the application of knowledge doing what you know. So I believe strongly that one of the things we must consistently do in Family Summit is to share testimonies and take people's testimonies. Because I believe there are some of us here who the Lord has helped our marriages, right? Yes. Am I right? Yes, that the knowledge you have received that helped you to uh, do something different. So is there anybody that is bold enough to share a testimony and experience from Family Summit for the past four years? Is there anybody in this room like that? You want to share? Stop sending to my DM alone. So that, you see, testimonies are a proof that authenticate the anointing of God upon the life of a man. I am anointed. Now you hide the testimony. Are you following me? Are you with me? There are those who are testimony holders. You hold testimony past fuel. God is doing something. So is there anybody who can share an experience? It may not be a testimony, but something, few minutes. Testimonies are, you know, validations of the power of God in the lives of men. Are you hearing me? And sometimes when you share those testimonies, the Bible says we overcame. Yeah. There's a way the devil is put to shame. So is there anybody? Just lift up your hands. Let's see you. We have one. Any other person? We have two. Any other person? Testimonies. <laughs> Even if not now, from many years of family summit, something that happened. We have two. I want more. Any woman? There's a way when you share this testimony, the devil is defeated in, yeah. you know, completely. Yeah. So let's start with that man that lifted up his hand there. Test oh, yeah, that man. Let's have you. Can you come? Can you come? Please come. Sorry, I'm breaking protocol. Sorry. Just feel like we shouldn't be talking without feedback. So that if we have to change style, we change style. 
Amen. God bless you. Tell us your name and just tell us what Family Summit has done in your life. Uh, good evening, everybody here. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my name is Abraham Tete. I'm from Benue State. Thank you. Yes. Um, what Family Summit have done into my life, I'm married since mm, 2001. After I got my first child with my wife, she left me. By then, I was in Abuja. After I went to work, as you, he was saying, he just decided to pack out of my house. When I came back, I saw a written letter on the bed. And I did not know where she was. The last, this year, after 19 good years. Yes, my son is in a university now. But all of a sudden, she just called during Easter period when I was home that she wanted to see me. So I was surprised. I was thinking maybe she's trying to pull my legs. And I told her that I'm in Benue, in my home. She now came over. I was shocked to see her. So according to her, she said she went to a family summit like this. Wow. And the pastor preached and the thing touched her. And that is the reason why she decided to come back come on. to join me. Come on. Yeah. Please clap your hands. Let's celebrate marriages that are built to last. If you are coming, come with your own testimony. Good. God bless you. God bless you. Any other person, walk here if you have a testimony quickly. This is a testimony service. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Pam Steven. Uh, Saturday just passed. Uh, we're 17 years in marriage. Uh, actually, before now, we got married while she was in wheelchair. We planned to get married and we had an accident and we still go ahead and got married. You know, but fast forwarding, when the, uh, when the family summit began, it's, most often when it starts, there will be a quarrel between me and my wife. But over time, I say, no, it's not right. That's the right thing. This has just come to medicate our marriage, our union. You know, like the, the one of 2020, right? That day we were, we were beefing, we're not talking. I just came over and uh, I was just hearing the and she was not here. And I really wish that she hear what I had so that the hearing would be better. Uh, when you are here I'm alone, baptized. already that is, the chips are down. When you go, you can't say the thing, you just keep out with it. See, I wish she was there. Well, uh, still fast forwarding again, I, 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 I entered the fire, the family summit takes, uh, takes place. I just, you just came and bring new fire in the home. I never knew my wife in a wheelchair. I never tell her. If I say I never see a wheelchair, and like seriously, I'm feeling like 40. I'm just feeling you. I'm knocking 50, not 50, but I'm feeling 45, wow. 40, 40. Can you clap for that? You know, I just, I just. Anytime I hear the word, I go back and I love my wife the more. And I thank God for the word that come from the pulpit. Mm. Like even before now, we're always well fed. You know, you can hear the word and it comes to you in so many dimensions. Even though it's not, you know, the it's a family summit has been taught. You know, but coming with the family for, for the family summit is just a, a brand new thing, and just loving my wife the more. I can't say everything because there's no time for yeah. that. You know, but so we know you are loving your wife the more. Like serious. Come on. Thank you. Come on. Hallelujah. Any woman? No woman to testify. Praise God. Any woman? I know you have testimonies. If you if you want the mic to come to you, to come to you. We want to expose the devil this evening. Amen. Any woman who want to testify? We are very gender sensitive here. <laughs> Praise God. But then this is a proof that God is good, right? That testimonies abound everywhere. For the remaining of you who want to share, you can send it. I will help you share it. Somebody say amen. I'm glad that I'm here again tonight to share God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so privileged to be among this kindred, to be a part of this family. I'm so privileged. They call me one of the musketeers, but I, felt, um, I feel as though I'm not qualified to be one of it. Thank you, Pastor Tinu, for blessing us. This morning, you opened our eyes. How many of you were blessed this morning? I was tremendously blessed. Tremendously blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Dunka, for taking out a week to help families. I often will say that any pastor 
that is dedicated, that is committed to building families, is deserving of double honor. Deserving of double honor. So, we celebrate you. We appreciate you. Pastor I, thank you for taking the blue for the men this morning. Thank you. They use you to talk to us. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And I celebrate every one of you. Please celebrate yourself this evening. <laughs> Hallelujah. This evening is special because I have something to share with us. Amen. Amen. I will try as much as possible not to be everywhere, not to jump. I want to be very calm this evening. Anytime I'm preparing a message, I'll be warning myself, don't talk like this, talk like this. But when I come here, something used to take over. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. Um, I believe is the anchor scripture for this summit. Matthew 7. He said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Next verse. And the rain descended, and the floods came. And these are destructive elements in the context of this scripture. In the context of what is being discussed here, rain in this context is not necessarily a blessing. Are you with me? Yes, sir. In the context of what is written here, these are destructive elements. Are you following me? There is a type of rain that is destructive. Some of us have experienced rain that pulled our homes up. And then it talks about floods. The winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. So there is a type of house that is indestructible. There is a type of house that is built to last. He said, they beat upon the house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So the game changer here is the foundation of that building, right? Because the foundation was upon a rock. It is critical to note that the foundation upon which your family is being built will determine the strength of your, life, of your family and your house. That the longevity of any structure is traceable to its foundation. Are you hearing me? It is foundation that determines height. It is foundation that determines strength. That is why it is important that if you want to build a home, a marriage, or any enterprise at all, emphasis must be placed on the quality of the foundation. Are you following me? One of the reasons why people are not focused on building foundation is because foundation is not visible. Unlike paintings and all of the, um, if you, if, for those who are builders, they will tell you, when you look at uh, the roofings of a house, the, uh, the, the pillars in the house, some of these things need to be treated with care because they are visible to, for people to see. But foundation is not visible. So people sometimes, in building any form of enterprise, project, or structure will not place so much emphasis on the foundation. Are you following me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Because we have a generation that is image driven. Mm. We have a generation that is caught up in the razzmatazz and the paraphernalias of anything. Image is everything. In fact, they have said looking good is good business. So anything that is not visible, attention is not given to it. And that is why cosmetic surgery is a big deal. Cosmetic enhancement is a big deal. There are people who are, who are enhancing bum bum without sense. Are you following me? Are you in church? I didn't, say, I didn't want to say this one, but I don't know where it comes from. So people place emphasis on externalities. Because it is what people see. As much as it is important, what is more important is the foundation. Are you following me? foundation. So many are in a hurry to get married. And what their biggest motivation is their age. A young lady ran to me and said, Pastor, I'm tired of being single. I said, why are you tired? He said, I'm 38. In the next two years, I'll be 40. Say, Pastor, I want a husband now. If not, I will get belly. Because I don't want metaf men menopause mm. to set in. People are in a rush to get married. People are in a rush to exit the single years. Unknown to us, our lives 
is divided in seasons. There is a single stage of our lives. And it's what you do with the single stage of your life or the single season of your life that will determine the quality of your li the life you will live as a married person. Are you following me? The single years are opportunities and privileges to build and lay the proper foundation for your marital destiny. Are you following me? Are you with me? And he said, he went further and said, anyone, everyone that beareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Bad foundation. He said, and the same rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And the Bible went for us, and great was that was the fall of it. Many people entered into marriage without preparation. Many of us entered marriage without the proper understanding of what it entails. We read the scripture this morning. Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. I like the NLT translation. Luke 14, 28. He said, don't begin until you count the cost. Don't start until you count the cost. The first posture for anyone desiring to be married, the Bible says, sit down first. Sit down. And it's not, it's, not lit, it's not saying that you should literally sit down. It's saying you should come to a place of calmness. Come to a place where you first understand what it takes to be married. Are you following me? Yeah. What it takes. For who will begin construction of a building, a family, without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money, enough capacity, enough resource to finish it. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, running out of ability, and then everyone will laugh at you. They will say, there is the person who started initial gragra. We call it IGG. <laughs> when I started out in ministry, I was always carried away by people who are excited from the beginning. Everybody can start, but not everybody can finish. Am I talking? And the great good thing about reward is that rewards are not given at the beginning. Am I talking? Rewards are always given at the end because it is those who can finish that are celebrated. Are you following me? Yes, Anybody can get married, but not everybody can stay married. Because it is easier to be married than to stay married. Mm. Am I talking? Yes. And one of the character of marriage, from the original design, marriage was designed to last forever. When the, when the manufacturer or the, the designer, the one that designed this institution, set out to design it at the back of his mind this was meant to last forever wow. are you following me yes, meant to last forever so starting is not big deal wow. i've seen people who on their wedding day start fighting there's a marriage that lasted for three months they cut it for two years they were told Jaybreak, 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 jaybreak. Don't, 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 don't. And for most of us, especially young people who are dating, I will talk to singles before the summit is over. You see, as a single person, God will establish systems of accountability around your life. People who will help you make the right choice as far as your marriage is concerned. Am I talking? Many people come to me and say, my father doesn't like this person. And they say, me, I no go agree. I must marry him. God will establish around your life systems of accountability. People who genuinely care about you. People who know you more than you know yourself. Am I talking? Who you have lived with. Who have seen your, your, what do you, what, your, 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 there's a word I'm looking for. Your, not proclivity. They have seen your vulnerability. They have seen your personality, your idiosyncrasies. Are you following me? Your peculiarities. 
They have seen you, and if they see the kind of person that can manage you, they can tell you this person is good for you. So one of the wisdom, native wisdom that we talk about, wisdom of the aged, is that in those days when you want to marry, they tell you, come, there is a girl in that compound. Haven't seen you. The way your head, they do sharp, sharp. Now what? This woman be cold water. Are you following what I'm saying? But these days, no. We meet a church. Because you can sing. Unknown to you, the altar is not the bedroom. <laughs> See? No, cool down, cool down. The skill required here is different from there. That's why you can be a successful pastor and be a failed husband. Because the skills are not necessarily transferable. You can be a good woman and a bad wife. You people don't get me. Ah, that, see, and there are many people who are married to good women. And you are frustrated. You know that people who can't explain, go and complain about their husband to somebody else. Because everybody perceives him to be a good man. Am I talking? Do I have any witness in this room? Everybody see your husband as a good man. Come what a fly. And you are under fire. Met a man one day. Complained about his wife. Told me how she was having him. Said so many unprintable things about his wife. I began to feel for him. And I told him, your wife must be wicked. Then he told me, pastor, keep quiet. He said, no, they shout. I said, what do you mean? He said, if you see my wife, you will slap me. I said, what do you, he said, if you see my wife, you will slap me. You will think I lied to you. I said, never. I have the spirit of discernment. I can see a witch in a preacher's collar. A few weeks later, or about a month later, I was walking around his house. Then he greeted me. I saw a woman cross the road to greet an elderly man whom I just finished greeting. And I greeted, so I passed the woman. And I looked at her, and I went to him. And I said, Pastor, that's my wife. When I turned to look at the woman, I wanted to shoot him, not slap him. <laughs> How dare you talk about this amiable personality? If you see the way she greeted that elder, am I talking? The way she greeted that man, she didn't look anything like all of the things he said. Am I talking? Because you can be a good wife, a good woman, and a bad wife. Did you catch that? Okay, let's go ahead. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everyone will laugh at you. They will say, there is this person who started this marriage and couldn't afford to finish it. There are some SOAB that are still existing, but the marriage has ended. <laughs> some of us are still owing the debt of the SOAB, but marriage has ended. You better stop wearing the SOAB because you are reminding the couple of their pain. Starters are not celebrated. The world celebrates finishers. Everybody can start in the World Cup, but at the end of the day, it's only one team that will receive the accolades. I want to challenge you today. Build capacity to finish. Build the resilience that will help you stay till the end. Build it. Are you following me? Because of time, I want to jump to a scripture. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. Today I'm talking about how to resolve conflicts in marriage. Are you with me? How to resolve. The first thing that a lot of couple get to deal with, or the first thing that shock many lovers after the honeymoon phase is over, is the fact that they never imagined that they could have differences or conflicts in their home. Are you following me? Yeah. Never. But one of the things about conflict is this. Conflict is as old as man. Mm. Even the marriage that God himself officiated. You know, God officiated the marriage of Adam and Eve. In that marriage, they had conflict. They raised sons 
that one of them became a murderer. Are you following me? The challenge for many people is not the conflict. It's the inability to manage conflict. Whether you like it or not, in every human interaction, there must be conflict. I say this to all of you who are married. There is nothing wrong with your marriage if there is a conflict. It is just a proof that two human beings are in a marital relationship. Many are frustrated when they encounter conflicts. Am I talking? So it is the ability to resolve conflict that will determine the longevity of your home and your marriage. How to manage. The same conflict that is threatening to tear your home. Out of that conflict, many homes were established. Out of that conflict, many other homes became better. Conflict is not new. Are you following me? Yeah. Are you in church? Yes, sir. Disagreements happen in all relationships. But what matters is how they are dealt with. The, day, the way you deal with an issue with your partner can determine if your relationship is healthy or unhealthy. And it has been scientifically proven that those in unhealthy relationship will die prematurely. Research conducted. Say, unhealthy marriage is one of the major cause of untimely death. Did you hear what I said? There are many people today who are buried. They will have been alive. But they were in toxic, unhealthy relationship. In the same vein, healthy relationship has been seen to prolong life. Healthy relationship. Relationship is a gift from God. Healthy relationship has been seen to prolong life. That is why it's advisable especially for those of you who are not married, anytime you sense toxicity, run. Did you hear what I said? But if you are married and there's conflict, the best gift you can give yourself is to find ways to build the capacity to resolve those conflicts. Because if you allow it, it will kill somebody. Listen, a bad marriage has only one purpose, to kill. And in every marriage, there are three lives. In every marriage. The life of the man, the life of the woman, and the life of the marriage. Are you following me? A bad marriage wants to kill one of the life. If he cannot kill the marriage, he will kill the man or the woman. Am I talking? That is why for most people who don't know how to resolve conflict, they are first response to conflict is to jump out because an unhealthy marriage threatens your life am i talking yes, sir. many people have developed all kinds of all kinds of cancerous diseases all kinds of diseases because of unhealthy marriages somebody told me when i came to just newly and i went to preach in a church and he was seated after the service he came and shook my hands and said to me he said listening to you has delivered me he said, before now, I was a walking corpse. Dead. Unhealthy marriages, scientifically, research conducted, has been discovered to terminate lives. How many of you have ever suffered heartbreak before? If you don't lift up your hand there, eh? you are the one that is breaking the heart. Of lift up your hand. How many of you can, can, can recollect the experience? There is a palpitation. Am I talking? Are you with me? At some point you go, <laughs> Solo, it will go better for you. <laughs> Wherever you... <laughs> I remember. Oh. Listen. Somebody broke my heart. The person that collected her from me was driving a Honda Hala. Every Honda Hala became my enemy. Anyway, I said, it is Wanaka. <laughs> I was tracking, but every Honda Hala became my enemy. How many of you know Honda Hala? Oh, some of you don't know. I hated it with a person. <laughs> you, 
your heart. And every deadly disease is traceable here. It's an offshoot of the state of this heart. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it proceed life. If the heart is in trouble, your life is in trouble. Out of it, guard it. The word guard means to set a security around it. Put a sentry around it. Build a watchtower around it. That's why I see good people. Anybody that tells you, yes, your head no correct. <laughs> Anywhere you go, you are just everybody has a, has has access to your life. Sister, sing with leave me. Elevates the criteria for the access into your life. Elevate. You are too available. That is why every Dick Tom Harry Ben. If you understand the role that marital relationship will play in your life, you won't play with it. It can kill you. We have a celebrated case in Nigeria, right? Of a woman, woman of God, anointed. How many of you know the case? Celebrated, very celebrated. Celebrated death of a woman who died in a marriage. And her husband was arrested. Am I right? And there were testimonies of, of all kinds of violence in that marriage. Am I talking? Coming from ministration the man will become a Jackie Chan. Pounding a woman. Am I talking? Yes, sir. Even if he doesn't shoot her, that situation can kill you. You have to be going. If your marriage is in trouble, look for help. Seek for help. I'm telling you, look for help. Some of you know the way to the hairdresser. More than a marriage counselor. Single people. I want to even elevate the cost of premarital counseling. Because before marriage, they will pay photographer 300000 Photographer that will snap you picture that in two years you go to look the picture of the verse. Because you are not looking at the greatest enemy of your life. Are you following me? Are you with me? Pay one million for event center. Then bring wine for me and juice. Give me jedi jedi. <laughs> and then when the trouble start, you won't look for photographer. You won't look for the event center owner. Am I talking? Are you following what I'm saying? You'll be looking for me. Forgive me, look for me, no problem. I'm not here. But I'm saying set your priorities right. For this purpose was the Son of Man made manifest. I'm available for it. But I'm telling you today, when your marriage is in trouble, Seek for help. Are you following me? We read a scripture yesterday. Say, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Conflict is not an indication that something is wrong with your marriage. And let me quickly state this before I forget. In conflict resolution, what is right is more important than who is right. Because for many couples, who are going through a conflict situation, their focus is always on, I am right, you are wrong. Are you following me? Marriage is not a political campaign. If you win, your partner loses, it's still a loss. Wow, 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 wow. Are you following me? Yes, if you win. So it is not about who is right. It's about what is right. To resolve a conflict, focus must be on what is the right thing to do. Are you following me? The re at, at the base of every unending conflict is someone who is refusing to do what is the right thing. It doesn't matter whether marriage conflict, ethnic conflict, all kinds of conflict. Until people get to say, what is the right thing? And one of the right things to do is to broker peace in conflict. Are you following me? It's to broker peace. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Say, can two, do two work together unless they have agreed to do so? Husband and wife, make up your mind that as far as me and you are concerned, this marriage will last. It's a commitment. Told you, I told my wife, I said, honey, on this island, we are stranded. Like Napoleon the Great, we have burned all the boats. The only way out of this is this way. Am I talking? Because when John Gumacho, Lion Gudewaka, Am I talking here? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. 
Every animal. You know, in the jungle, they said, every morning, I used to pity that animal they call, um, um, gazelle. Is it gazelle? Is it gazelle that looks like a goat? Or antelope? It's every morning that the antelope wakes up. In order to be alive, it must run faster than the fastest cheetah. In order to be alive, the antelope must run faster. So as it wakes up, it starts running. <laughs> and in order for cheetah or the tiger to eat, it must run faster than the fastest antelope. Am I talking? So there is a commitment to survive. Everybody wants to live. Am I talking? Yeah. This little creature in the jungle, I used to like to watch Animal Channel a lot. Very little. They don't have strength. Every animal feeds on them. Are you hearing me? The cheetah eat them. The lion eat them. The hyena eat them. So, and he's surrounded by enemies like Israel. Amen. <laughs> no strength. So when, he wake, when the animal wakes up, God gave it one small wisdom. When they come, they live under the ground. So when, and for food, no day under food, na up a day. And if they come up, their life is in danger. So what they now do that they will come up. Then they will set sentries. Some of them, a few of them will go and climb high place and be watching. Their head can turn 360 like this. Be watching. So you can spot a lion, a leopard from afar. And they have some kind of whistle that they blow. So when this family rise, go up in the, on the mountain or the tree, they hang there and be watching. These other guys will come out and be eating. Focus and looking for what to eat. When they spot the lion, they will blow that whistle. I have never seen anything as fast as that. In 30 seconds, both the one from the up and the one on the all of them are in that. Because if they are not as fast as that, they will not survive. Am I talking? Make up your mind. You and your partner, this marriage, it will work. No matter the demons and the challenges that come, we will make it work. I like the system and the culture that, that you talk about a person who will be the culture say, no matter what happens, beg me. Yes. You are the one who says, he said, no matter what happens. That's a culture of reconciliation. Find a system that works in your home so that you can resolve conflict. Am I talking? Yes. Anyway. Yes, sir. Can two work together except they be agreed? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. Amplified version says, blessed, spiritually calm, blessed, spiritually calm with, with life, joy in God's favor are the makers and maintainers of peace. I no go agree, no they work for marriage. Maintainers of peace. For they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Touch your neighbor, say be a peaceful person. Peaceful. peaceful. Don't come into marriage, say I no go agree, I no go agree. I will show you, say I be worried again. And there are women like that. You fight your husband as if he's your enemy. Fight your wife as if you're your enemy. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Quickly. Yeah. Hebrews 12, 14. Is NIV say, make every effort. Somebody say effort. Make, it takes effort. It takes work. After the emotion of love has expired. You know that emotion of love is just a trigger. It has expiry date. And if the Navdak number is not renewed... <laughs> You see that emotional love? Am I talking to people? Yeah? Yeah. It has expiry date. Then you need to switch from emotional love to what we call intentional love. Shifting to the love that God commands you to give. Not the love that you feel. That one expires. Are you with me? Are you with me? It expires. So at this time, it is effort that is required. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone, especially your husband. Make effort. Talk to yourself. Sometimes self-talk is the best form of motivation. Look at the mirror. I remember one young boy, he's late now. He used to go and look for a girl in the night. He used to hang in the house. He, couldn't, he would go there around 9 p.m. He would be living there 12, past 12. Yeah. And police would catch him. For what they call loitering, is that? Is that what they, gotcha. He will do frog jump. And after you do frog jump, you can't walk again. Tomorrow again, he will get up and go to the house by 9 p.m. 
Because humans are... Then if you're coming home, and when the finish, by 10, or 10 that is going, the lady will escort him. They will almost reach and say, you don't need our house. Make her escort you too. <laughs> then they say, let's escort you too. <laughs> let's go. Before you know, 12. Mm. Then police will beat him. One day, he was tired. He went to the mirror and said, Eno, he answered, eh? <laughs> this guy will kill you. Okay. Stop, stop, stop. He, he looked the mirror. Self-talk. Organize your own family summit. Am I talking? With yourself. Say, this my habit will kill me. How can I be engaging in self-sabotaging behavior? And it is the highest form of insanity to do the same thing all over and expect a different result. You are attracting the same kind of men. Something is wrong with you. Am I talking here? Talk to the second man. Self-talk. Make effort to live in peace. So how do I resolve conflict? Number one, build a culture for open and honest communication in your home. Build a culture. Listen, some of you cannot handle truth. That's why your partner is lying to you. Are you following me? Yeah. You can build a culture of open and honest communication. I've had people say things like, just tell me the truth. And when they tell you the truth, you start fighting. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. Build a culture for honest and open communication. In a healthy relationship, you and your partner can communicate openly about what is bothering you. There are many men who don't know what is bothering their wife. There are many women who don't know what is bothering their husband. Some persons have, have found other strong towers to run to. You know the way the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower? The righteous run into it and save. For some people, Dele is the strong tower. Are you following me? Because there are people you can have open and honest conversation with without the fear of being judged. Am I talking here? Without the fear. And somebody once defined true friendship as, the, as, as a privilege of having a person in your life that you can be open without open with without a fear of being judged. If conflict must be resolved, you must build a culture for open and honest communication. After the appetite regime, the South African government set up what they call the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. Are you following me? Not just reconciliation, let us tell the truth what happened so that wounds can be healed. Are you following me? If you want to resolve conflict, be open and you too be able to mal manage openness. Be free to talk about important issues like money, sex, children. There is nothing like sexual compatibility, it's just sexual communication. Talk. Honest communication. Are you following me? Are you in charge? One of my mentors for many years worked senior managers with the NMPC, one of the whatever. And then, one day, all these coppers came to their office, serving coppers. And those girls, as if they, they went and carried the most well-built to bring to his office. They wear those pantsuits. All of their body was showing. And this man is a conservative believer. His office is like a church. But what he was seeing was the starting. Are you following me? As if they pray, if you open, I go see some shape pass. They wear those, those tight suits. You know those wicked guests? Have you, have, you, have you gone to the bank? Very intentional. Some camiso that if they bend down like this, everything will come down. This man handled it on Monday, on Tuesday. On Wednesday, they say, no, run. He jumped during break, drove his car to his wife's business premises. Told her, enter car. Before them, very conservative, like, the wife will not wear earring, will tie her apart like um, he drove her stay without talking. Where are we going? He said, Shh. Do you want to save your marriage? <coughs> he said, They want to collect you from me. <laughs> you know, if it's a woman, they'll say, You now, you they follow them. Are you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, you, your eye, where they carry your eye, go there. Some things your eye will not go there, devil will move it like this. Because these daughters of Jezebel are weak. They will deliberately do it. Am I talking? Say, enter. 
He went, I drove her to a boutique. Oga, give my wife pantsuit. <laughs> Honest and open communication of what bothers you. Some men cannot tell their wife the things that they are dealing with, the temptations. Are you following me? You can't talk. So women cannot also say. If a woman comes home and tells you, say, some brother touched me in church. Say, Change church. <laughs> that would have church. <laughs> God is not there. As if it's the church that is the problem. Are you following me? You want to resolve conflict? Be open. Talk about everything. Talk about it. Build it. Sit down and say, can we talk about everything? How much can you handle? Am I talking here? Number two, be respectful even in a fight. Don't fight dirty. Talked about don't fight dirty. There are things you shouldn't say to your partner. Don't cross the lines and start insulting your partner. Keep the focus of the dispute on the issue at hand. Don't bring personal jibes and put downs into it. Anytime you see cussing and name calling, that's an abusive relationship. Anytime you see they leave the issues and start importing other issues, making reference to parents, some people married for 18 years, conflict where I say, now nah, so on our reception day. <laughs> Around 122, I saw your mother. <laughs> Fessing rice that is not our own. <laughs> That's an abusive relationship. Importing things as if you are a lawyer. According to the case between Falana of 1982, Falana versus Plateau State Government. That's how you do. No. Don't fight respectfully. Are you hearing me? Even in the fight, make your, bring your, make your point known without calling names. Number three, focus and deal with the problem, not the person. Are you following me? Are you in charge? Focus on the issues, not the person. I know, and it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's, low, it's a sign of low self-esteem. If the only way you want to get at your partner is to destroy their person. Are you following me? Because some people do that. You want to destroy the person so that he will feel bad. Suddenly you will know the choir. Become praise what she did at home. <laughs> Things are working for me. <laughs> Things are working for me. Low jibes, amen? Focus on the issue. Deal with the problem, not the person. Sometimes when you argue with your partner, it is because someone's needs are not being met. They said the reason why people shout when they are fighting, even though they are in the same room, is because they are not being heard. Are you following me? People in the same room, but shouting as if the husband is in another place, or the wife is there. It's because the person is not being, it's, not, it's feeling as though you are not hearing what I'm saying. And so there will, there's now a need for me to shout to be able to communicate my point. Focus on the issues, not the person. Number four, avoid the temptation to be manipulative in a fight. You want to handle conflicts? Avoid the temptation to be manipulative. Don't control or dominate your spouse. When God gave us the dominion mandate, humans were not a part of it. God didn't say, go and dominate man. Am I talking here? Everybody will resist anybody that wants to dominate them. Man was not created to be dominated. That's why when poverty comes upon you, there's, there's a reaction. Sickness, there's a reaction. Even if a person wants to dominate you, there's a reaction. Avoid that temptation to be manipulative. Avoid it. Sometimes people can become manipulative in, in a conflict. You want your partner to do something. You can begin to follow through ways that are very injurious to their person. Saying things that are not connected to the, to the situation so that you can, you can manipulate them into doing what you want them to do. Are you following me? Are you in church? Yes, sir. Avoid that temptation. Manipulation is toxic. Manipulation is a classic sign of narcissism. Are you following me? Most narcissistic individuals are manipulative in nature. They don't come across as that. They don't act as if they are that. But they subtly manipulate you. And most people in a manipulative relationship lose themselves. After a while, they will react. There was a story of a young man. Not a story. In fact, a Nigerian in the U.S. 
one Nigeria from the east, married his wife and brought her to the U.S. Eventually, according to his story, the wife became a nurse. And the wife grew wings, according to his story. And then manipulating this guy. Doing all kinds of things. He got tired one day and pulled a gun on her. And shot her while making a 911 call. Are you following what I'm saying? That's, he, he was beating the woman and he was making a 911 call. And he was crying. He said, look at what you have done to me. You have brought me to this point. On the phone with the police, they were coming to his house, begging him to be calm. He said, my problem, I will finish you today. Cried, cried. Shot her. And when she died, when he noticed she was dead, he started kicking her. Oh yeah, get up and disobey me now. Get up. Get up. Shot her again. Police said, who is that? He said, I just shot my wife. And then suddenly it dawned on him that he was going to jail. He said, in, in that same phone call, it was online. And that's the phone. He said, look at what you have done to me. You have finished my life. Everything I built in the U.S. gone. There is no need for evidence. Evidence that he supply him. He killed his wife in cold blood. This was premeditated murder. It's not even, it's not manslaughter. Are you following me? Murder. Life imprisonment. As I believe, his wife manipulated him. If you are manipulating your partner, if they react, it might be bad. Stop it. Stop it. You want your wife to dress some kind of way. Stop comparing her with somebody else. You are coming to church. Your wife doesn't dress well. When sister so so and come and dress, you stand up, they worship. <laughs> you when they stand up. Because Jennifer and I is leading worship. You don't stand up. As <laughs> uh, so you are standing up, you know what I like. <laughs> Manipulative. Number five ways to deal with conflict. Compromise to accommodate. Compromise. In conflict, there must be compromise. You can't always have your way. Are you following me? What did I say? You can't always have your way. Compromise to accommodate. Find some middle ground. A win-win is better than I won. A win-win. Finding a balance between what both partners want and are comfortable with is very important. Find a middle ground that both of you are comfortable with. Don't insist on your way, especially if you're a man. Don't insist on your way. Most of us are like that. Insisting on your way. You know, yesterday, was it yesterday we came? Yesterday, they gave me a beautiful flower. Wow, life flower. Thank you, sir. They gave us a beautiful flower. Very beautiful. When we go home, my wife said she needs to look for a flower verse so that I can put water. After they put the water, and I'm somebody who is very aesthetic in nature. So my wife now carried it and put it somewhere and said, this is where it is better. Me. Inside my village, people say, tell us in a lie. <laughs> I told her no. As I was about to say it, I realized I may bruise her ego. Because she did it from her heart. She was excited. She wanted to show to me that the flower they gave you, I want to nurture it. Put it somewhere. Let it be fine. So I said, if I leave this flower, I go, I go die. <laughs> after all, the flower go die after all. <laughs> Are you following me? Why would I fight over something that has expiry date? At the expense of the relationship. <laughs> so, but my village people didn't leave me. I couldn't stand it. But then and I found a better way to communicate it. So I said, honey, can you try it on the dining table? With my baritone voice. Then she carried it by herself. Put it there. Step back and say, wow, it's better here. I say, village people, we no go better for now. <laughs> what you people planned for me was that this night I will not sleep well. But my God has won. <laughs> diplomacy in conflict resolution. Am I talking? Don't. Diplomacy is needed. Some of us don't know how to fight. We will talk everything. You insult our grandfather. The bride price where you pay, the way they deal with you, you never forgive your wife. <laughs> so it brings me to number six. Stop fighting about everything. Choose your battles. 
It's not everything that was. Men don't notice everything. Am I talking here? Yeah? Yeah. You fight about everything. You know the price of yam. You know the price of tomato. You, they count spaghetti sticks. <laughs> you fight about everything. Sometimes we need to consider whether what we are fighting about is really what are green over. Is it just a matter of what to eat for dinner? Or sharing the, some things are not important. Don't fight about everything. Choose your battles. Reserve your, your strength for major battles now. Am I talking? Reserve. When the time comes for major issues, when you are talking, your partner will say, I don't know they complain no. Am I talking? You know they complain. For him to complain now, it must be important. But you will fight about everything. Everything gets your attention. Remote must be in the right place. How much is remote? Before you know it, you, the way you used to shoot from zero to 1,000, you'll be sweating your nose. But you go to the motor park, they will collect your seat. You'll be calm. See, we are, we are brothers. All of us are brothers. <laughs> Choose your battle. Are you following me? Number seven, and the last one, I think. Expending more energy on your resolvable differences. Spend energy on those resolvable differences. You know, one of the, one of the grounds that the court can dissolve in marriage is what they call irreconcilable difference. That's the ground that the court can say this marriage can no longer exist. But I often would tell people, forget about irreconcilable differences. There are differences that are irreconcilable. Am I talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are things that can never change. Don't stop fighting about stretch mark. <laughs> when my wife gave birth to twins, they said they would not, uh, you know, they used to press belly with hot water so that it could go flat. They said they wouldn't press her. And I was seeing some balls in my wife's stomach. Ah. I said, honey, this thing is too big. I was bothered about it. My wife, when we were going out, after she has, the children go, you wear gedu, you know gedu. My wife would tie herself. Then in the public, I'll be seeing flat tummy. When we get home, I have to do prr, prr. Why is everybody? <laughs> All of you are there. Are you? Do I have witness in this room? Oh, okay. I said, "Are we? We? Are we? We?" See, you. I focus on it. It was preparing me for nothing, and my children came out of that place. Are you following me? They are my children. Troubling myself for nothing. After a while, I get sense. If you come at me, my go hold on, amen. Now <laughs> And you know, suddenly the, the thing become the good. You got the fine for your eye. Do I have anybody in this church? Before you know, say, this thing is sexy. Oh. Flesh is good sometimes, amen. Una <laughs> two, they make me talk. Somebody say amen. amen. So focus. Okay, I want to give you the last one, one, number eight. I love this one. And I'll stop here. Listen to understand before you respond. In a conflict situation, listen to understand. Many people, you know, are just waiting for your partner. You're waiting for your partner. Finish talking, make I talk my own. So everything your partner said, you didn't understand one. Are you following me? Listen first to understand. Once you don't understand, ask questions. Am I talking? And never say to your partner, this is what you mean. No people say that. I'm saying, say, look, this, I know your meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you are trying to say. And if you understand anything about communication, communication is not achieved until understanding is attained. Yeah. So understand first. Then you can respond. Once you do that, it will stop some of this unnecessary fight. How many of you have quarreled? After like two days, before you realize that your partner didn't mean harm. Yeah. Am I talking? Because at that time, you now understand your partner very well. If
If you don't understand, ask yourself, what, what I need to give me clarity before I respond. And when you do that, your marriage will be better. Have you been blessed today? Have I helped anybody here tonight? Rise your feet, let's pray. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Lift up your hands. If you deal with conflict, 50% of your marital situations solved. Deal with them. Conflict management is critical. So in premarital counseling, we teach people the, how to manage conflict. Father, help me. Except the Lord help you, no man can help you. Lord, help me. Lift up your hands. Just open your mouth and let him hear how grateful you are that you are hearing these truths in this meeting. And change your life. Reto so prakusha pikato zatila badu zapata. Inga guda zeto libra daba zote kaliba daba. Thank you, Father. Just open your mouth and pray. Radose prakata ba liga dedo zota. Can I hear people just open their mouth and pray for their families? Speak concerning your home. Just pray in the spirit for your marriage, for your children, for your own family. It's the family summit. We are gathered here to make sure that our there's a re-engineering taking place in our homes. Thank you, Father. Concerning my home, it is working. I, re I receive wisdom to manage conflicts in my home. Can that be your prayer? I receive the grace to manage situations. I receive the grace to understand my spouse better. I receive the grace. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. Stretch forth your hands towards me. I pray for you today. For every home that is represented here, receive wisdom. Bible says, through wisdom is a house, a life, an enterprise builded. Today, the wisdom to build, the wisdom to build, may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. That by your wisdom, your home will be delivered. In the name of Jesus. That by the application of truth, your family will experience peace in the name of Jesus. I decree a restoration of joy in every home that is represented here. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace to every storm. I speak peace to every storm. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise?